Well, good Friday morning to you, Top Fan Rivalry followers. It is Bill and Jackson. It is time to do our weekly review. There's so much we can talk about. We're now into May. Um, so happy Cinco de Mayo to you. Uh, Jackson, how are you doing this Friday morning? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Jackson's always just even killed. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm good, bro. Yeah, go with the flow, bro. Can't go with the flow, bro. I love it. I love it. All right, Jackson, let's waste no time to get into it. What's your number one this week? What do you want to talk about? Well, how about Mr. Aaron Judge heading to the injured list again for the, the New York Yankees? He has a mild hip strain. Uh, you know, and the NL or the AL East is really kind of tight right now. Everyone who's not Tampa Bay. <laughs> True. Who are tw- who are twenty games over five hundred uh, as of Friday morning? Preach, preach. So I mean, you know, the Yankees, despite being over five hundred, are like nine games back or something like that. So without you know, the engine that makes their team kind of go, their lineup kind of go. It's going to be interesting to see where they where they end up because without Aaron Judge, they don't seem to play very well because they don't have that. You know, he is he is the he is the big bopper. He is the thump in the lineup. Um he is, and without Arson Judge and without John Carlos Stanton, which is that's how that whole lineup is made up, uh, that's gonna hurt the Yankees. And a couple of weeks in that division could mean a ton. Let's not get stupid here, right? Yeah, I mean, even with the expanded wild card format. Just looking at the divisions right now, you know, Texas is kind of in the mix. The Angels are right there. Houston's always going to be in it, you know. So there's three teams right there. Every team in the NL or the AL East, excuse me, that's five more teams. So there's possibly, you know, six, seven teams fighting for, you know, three wild card spots. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Yankees in a bit, but I'll, yeah, good call on Aaron Judge. So, Jackson, this oh, yeah. week, I'm going to focus on teams, not individual oh. stats. I'm going to focus on teams. And the first one comes out of Queens, right? Are the Mets starting to Met? They lose three games to the Detroit Tigers. Mad Max gets beat. Kate Upton gets beat. Um, when you have oh, Mad Max, Mad, Mad Mad Max didn't just get beat; he got shelled. He gave up like eight runs. Yeah, Tigers so, beat the brakes off the Mets. Yeah, and and the Tigers aren't awesome. No, <laughs> so, are. so the fact that the Tigers, uh, you know, manhandled Max Scherzer and Justin Upton. I'm sorry, Justin Verlander and Kate Upton. Justin Verlander um, tells us a little bit of the story of like. You can't, if you're the Mets, the Braves are playing too good. You can't afford to go on a three, four, five game losing streak. It's not going to play well for you in the later rounds. So my first thing is, should the Mets, I know it's only May, but should the Mets start sounding warning signs? What do you think, Jackson? You know, as a Braves fan, I'm going to give a controversial opinion here. Uh, that I didn't want to share last week when you had Thomas and I on because I didn't want to trigger anyone. But right now out the gate, it's looking like the Marlins are the second best team in the NL East. You know, the Phillies haven't been able to seize any kind of sustainable momentum. Every time they go on a long winning streak, they follow it up, you know, getting swept or something. And the Mets have just been so inconsistent all year. And they haven't been playing that good at baseball. And I, and the Mets rest, roster construct, construction – you know, their lineup lacks power, which is necessary in today's game. It, you can't, you know, you have to have the small ball and the power to kind of, you know, have lots of success. I know the Mets won 105 games last year with the same exact lineup, so I'm going to put my hands up like this. But I think the Mets should be sounding the warning bells because if you dig an early hole against a team like the Braves, who plays really well in the second half, it could be disaster. Yeah, it could. And, and here's the thing. The Braves could – go on a a 10 and five winning streak. And if the Mets go on a, on a five and 10, there's five games. Where are you going to make those up? Right. Yeah. Um, Especially with less division games, the Braves taking two out of three in New York was huge. Yeah. 
yeah, no, I, amen. I, you know, um, I, I honestly, I'm looking right now. I'm looking as of, as of this morning, Friday morning here, I'm looking at the standings. And if I got this right, let me just make sure I, I'm not misquoting you here. Um, if I've got this right, which I do, now it's up. The Mets are five and a half games back of the Braves. Um, and so they could be as many as six games back of the Braves as things kind of wrap up here pretty quick. But you're talking five and a half games. If the Braves go on a 10 and five run and the Mets go on, now you're talking 10 and a half, 11 games. Which isn't, a, I know the Braves made that up last year. But like you know, the Braves had to play what seven thirty baseball to make up a ten game, a ten game deficit. It's not easy, and you know, it it's the same thing for teams like the Cardinals and the house. You know how you start off the Phillies because it's not like you can slip into the third wild card like the Phillies did last year with eighty five wins. I think the National League wild card is going to be a bloodbath because. Every division has like three or four teams in the mix. And it's just going to be really hard. You know, you can't just slip in under the radar, you know, and then turn on the playoff mode. That's not how it's going to work. It's going to be a dogfight to the end for that last wild card spot. So you can't afford to lose this much ground early. Yeah. Agreed. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Okay. What do you got for number two? Uh, number two. Uh, I mean, as a rival of the Philadelphia Phillies, Bryce Harper is back. Um, okay. You know, he went three for three, two walks in his second game back, you know, just doing the Bryce Harper thing. Um, funnily enough, MLB denied the Phillies request to let him wear an elbow brace on the base paths because it took up time and they allow no exceptions to the, the pitch clock, which is actually kind of hilarious to me that they would say something like that to disregard player safety. But anyways, Bryce Harper's back. So, you know, Whoops, turned my video off there. <laughs> um, and that should help the Phillies out. There are two games under 500 um, as of this morning. And, you know, just like the Mets, they need to they need to make up time. They can't lollygag. Like I just said, you can't lollygag in the National League and hope to get hot at the end because I don't think that's going to work this year. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Bryce Harper coming back early is a good thing for the fight in Phils, but I mean, he had a good series against the Dodgers, but how does it come when you're, you haven't done a ton of baseball activities over the last year? Now, granted, well, I shouldn't say the last year, last six months. Now, granted, you know, he, he did come back with a tear um, on a tear, I should say. I mean, he went, what, three for, Five or something like that, three for six, batting 500. So not bad. Good for you, Bryce. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, the downside to him coming back for the Phillies is now Bryce Harper eats up their DH spot every single night. So, you know, it turns back into the Phillies, you know, weak defense to have a line that up. That's a whole separate podcast that we're talking <laughs> talk we'll, about. We'll get into that the one. Way, the way... We'll get into that one. Okay, How they're going to so... line up and all that. My number two, you you fed right into my number two. My number two is about the fight in Phils. So they come into the Chavez Ravine hot, right? Kind of turn it around. Then they out they get outscored 36 to 11. The Dodgers manhandled them. Manhandled them. So and that brings the Phils down to um down to two games under 500. Uh, now the the question becomes uh, now they're going home to play Boston who Boston's on a tear right now too so are the Phils going to keep sliding or are they going to make a difference you talk to me Jackson um, you know their bullpen had a really good stretch until that Dodger series they kind of imploded in two out of the three games when the Dodgers really routed them uh Wednesday's loss was particularly brutal. You know, they blew the lead to the Dodgers and then they tied the game back up and then Kimbrell comes in and gives up a walk-off grand slam. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Phillies respond. Um, 
the general Phillies fans and listening to some Phillies, you know, media, out, sports media out here is that it's it's different from what they encountered last year under Rob Thompson, who's their manager, became the manager partway through last year. They said it, that series kind of felt like a Joe Girardi series in which, you know, the Phillies, despite, you know, they should have gotten a boost from getting Harper back. They kind of caved in on themselves. So it'll be interesting to see how they respond in the next couple of series. But, you know, I think I've said enough about the Phillies on this podcast. You know, you got you to pick. I know it's only May, but you got to pick your play, play up. Otherwise, you're not going to make the playoffs. Well, what we're seeing this season, especially with the rule changes, which makes the MLB a lot quicker, a lot, you know, you got to you got to play almost different kind of baseball than you have before. What you're seeing is you're seeing a five, six, seven game lead early on could be enough. And uh, you look at at teams like Oakland, right, who went six and 23, their first 30, 29 games, I should say. Right. I can do math there. Your first 29 games, they go six and 23. Probably out of it, especially in their division. Now, if they played in the central either Central, American League or National League, they still have a shot, right? Um, the Pirates, being in the division that they are, starting out as hot as they did, they still got a shot, right? But when you're the Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins are playing better than expected, um, probably a year or two better than expected, um, and then you've got uh, teams like the Mets who are stacked and if they can figure it out over the summertime, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And the Braves, you got to step it into high gear. You're the National League champions. You've got to step it into high gear. If you don't step it into high gear, you're in trouble. Yeah, and uh, one of the big concerns around here is how Aaron Nola's been pitching. His mm-hmm. velocity's down, and they're saying he looks tired. You know, after you know they rode Aaron Nola into the playoffs, and then they rode Aaron Nola in the playoffs, and that you know the two the two pitcher system always looks good in the playoff when you have the two guys going out there pitching every game and winning every game for you. But, you know, the after effects hitting into the following season can be disastrous. Yeah. So what do you got for number three? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll steal your idea. I hope I'm not stealing this Cardinals who are off to no. a horrendous start. And so they're now, uh, 10 and 22, I think, something like that. They just got swept by the Angels. They got swept by the Dodgers. You know, they dropped three or four to the Giants. Those have been their last three series. And I have a question for you, Bill. Are are the Cardinals, you know, are they done? No, not in their division. <laughs> 12, 12, games their division. Under fi- 12 games under 500, you don't think they're done? Nope, not in their division. Not in their division. Um if again, if they played in the National League East or West or the American League East or West, yes, they're done. Um, not in their division. Because right now Pittsburgh owns that division. Does Pittsburgh have the ability to take that division? Do the Cubs sneak in? Do the Brewers sneak in? The Cardinals always seem to figure it out. And you've got Aaron Nola and or um, I'm sorry, Aaron Nola. You just mentioned Nola. You've got uh Nolan Arenado. Close enough, Bill. I went to public school. And um, and you've got Adam Wainwright like that just came back. You've got um, Paul Goldschmidt. You've got some players. you got Contreras. You've got players, right? And so the dog days are not going to be the dog days. They have to step it into high gear in order to be effective. If they don't step it into high gear, yes, they're done. But again, they play in the National League Central. So, I mean, explain to me, explain to me how, how the Pittsburgh Pirates are 20 and 12 and do they hold on to that? Can they still play that well in the dog days? Milwaukee's only a game out at 18 and 12. Okay. And so can they play to that capacity? The Cubs are only four and a half games out. Cincinnati's only six and a half games out. So what do you think based on the division? What do you think? You know, I don't want to say it, but I, I think Brewers have something to prove this year. And the Pirates, mm-hmm. thanks to their hot start, kind of have some swagger and some confidence. I think it's going to be really hard 
for the Cardinals to even get back into the race, let alone, you know, take the division. I think, you know, again, talking about poor roster construction, <laughs> um, you know, they they have little to no starting pitching. Their bullpen's good, but when your bullpen has to go and cover four to five innings every night, that's not good. You know, and Nolan Arenado's he's been bad this year. I'm I'm not gonna, you know, mince words, try to make it sound pretty. Arenado's been bad. Uh, Goldschmidt's been good, but he hasn't been MVP Goldschmidt. So without, you know, their two best players hitting and without their starting pitching, you know, it's been a month. And you know, you're not the Oakland A's. Uh, so your starting pitching should be coming around right about now, you know, rounding in the form. But, you know, Jack Flaherty gave up, what, nine runs to the Angels on Thursday? So what what is, does that tell you? He's, he's getting hammered by the Angels. True. Um, so you don't think they're going to make it up? You think that's it's done? I, I think – St. Louis is going to have a very interesting summer heading into the offseason because without the pitching and the pitching prospects, I think something needs to be radically done with the roster to even try to salvage, you know, any sort of window of contention. I agree with you. I agree with you on the Brewers. I do. I think you, you're spot on there. I absolutely agree with you with the Brewers aspect of it. But the Cardinals always seem to figure it out. The last 10 or 15 years, they've figured it out. Do I think the Cardinals are going to be done? No. Uh, can they have a month of May like they had a month of April? No. They've got to be at least, I think they played 28 games this month total. They've got to be at least 14 and 14. Okay. Better for them to be 17 and, you know, 17 and, and 11, right? Now, 17 and 11 isn't knocking the cover off the ball, but it's making progress, right? Yeah, and baseball is a game of say, progress. It's a long season. They're, they're going to need to be six, seven games over 500 to get back on track. If they have a 14 and 14 month, you, to me, you know, you're still 12 games under 500 two months in. So that's going to be, you know, mm -hmm. quite yeah. the hole to dig out of. Yeah. And and you and I have mentioned this before, and the and the Cardinals happen to be this team right now. But remember, everybody's going to play the Washington Nationals. Everybody's going to play the uh, the um, um, the Colorado Rockies. Everybody's going to play the Oakland A's. Everybody's going to play the Kansas City Royals. Every like you're going to play all the bad teams, so you've got to beat up on the teams that are struggling. And even if you're the Cardinals, remember, the Cardinals win a lot of games because of their lineup, right? Like Joe Torre used to say when he wrote his book about his Yankee years, the Yankees won a lot of uh, win, uh, had a lot of wins because of the name on the front of their jersey, not because they were always the best team. Think about what the Cardinals have done over the last ten seasons, right? So I, I don't think they're done. So interesting. <laughs> two yeah, I mean, two wildly different takes. <laughs> yes. That's okay. We're allowed, we're allowed to have, yeah. that's why we do these things. Right. And so we're allowed to have different thought patterns on it, but I, I think you're bringing up good points. I just think that we've got a, still a lot of baseball to play. Now, again, 14 and 14 doesn't get them where they need to be this season, uh, this, um, this season, if they start June 1st, you know, having won 14 and lost 14, they're in trouble. They're absolutely in trouble. But again, if they go 17 and 11 this month, right, going into the dog days. So we'll see. We'll see. All right, you, read, you ready for my third one? You just led me to another one. But wow. I had it written down already. It was already right here. So um, is it doom and gloom in the Bronx? And so, <laughs> so – Derek Jeter used to say, if we don't win the World Series, then it was a season of failure, right? But remember, he played on some really, really good teams. So the Yankees are currently in last place as we sit on Cinco de Mayo. Um, they're currently in last place at 17 and 15. And it doesn't get any better because guess what? They are going to go to Tampa Bay this weekend to play Tampa Bay as part of the rivalry, quote-unquote, oh. 
Um, so it's not going to get any better when they're playing a team that's 26 and six. That being said, is it time to sound the alarm bell at 17 and 15 with the Bronx Bombers? I have my opinions on this, but I'm going to let you go first, Jackson. Talk to me. I, I think there should be a slight panic. Like I mentioned earlier, Aaron Judge being out is a big piece of the lineup. You mentioned Stanton being out. And yeah, the lineup's built around the two the two big boppers. You know, see, the Yankees don't have a ton of depth, and it's how their depth players play, you know? The Yankees can benefit by playing 500 ball while Aaron Judge is out, if Aaron Judge is only out for 10 to 15 games. If he's out any longer than that, I think you have to sound the alarm bell in, in New York because despite their good pitching, you need to score to win, especially in the American League East with these lineups. You're going to need to win games by outscoring some people. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's true. Um, here's why. I'd, here's where I say you sound the alarm bell, but you don't scream it. Right. It's just kind of a little bit of a ding, 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 ding. It's not ah, right. Um, this is why, because they're the Yankees. Okay. Again, when people, when the Yankees go into other stadiums, people freak because it's the Yankees. They've won the most World Series. Now, here's the thing you have at least one guy, if not two, actually, if not three guys that have been faces of franchises before. Okay. Anthony Rizzo was the face of the Cubs for a lot of years. Let's not forget he's their first baseman. Let's not forget he's having a very decent year out the gate. Okay. The difference with Anthony Rizzo, though, is he hasn't had to be the face of this franchise because it's Aaron Judge. And if it's not Aaron Judge, it's John Carlos Stanton. So he's going to have to keep it up and step it up into higher gear. Okay. Most people forget about him in the lineup because they're worried about Aaron Judge and, and they're worried about um, John Carlos Stanton. So now you got to step it up. Two, Nasty Nestor is going to get back on track, okay? And when he's on track, he's a dominant pitcher. Three, Garrett Cole looks like he is having a season, okay? It looks like he's having a very, very, very good season. And so my argument to Garrett Cole, or I mean to the Yankees, is, is that Cole pitches well and so does Nasty Nestor Cortez. Um and Anthony Rizzo can keep things going. The Yankees could play two, three games above 500 um, with Aaron Judge out. Now, John Carlos Stanton is out until the middle to the end of, of June. And when he comes back, he may not be the same at all this season. So you may need to chalk that one up as a as a wash. But which which is a shame because if you took out even half of Stanton's games and missed the injury, he would probably be a surefire Hall of Famer. Yes. Yes. But here's the argument for the, the Yankees. At the right now, the Yankees need to learn how to do two things and two things only. Okay. One, they need to learn how to play small ball because they're not going to hit everybody's not going to hit home runs right now. And two, they just need to win series. Go into Tampa Bay, take two out of three. You don't have to sweep that series. Take two out of three. So you get out of there 19 and 16, right? But you hand you make Tampa Bay 20, 27 and eight, right? So if you take two out of three, you pick up a game in the standings, right? When you go into Detroit, you, you pick up um, a couple of games here and there, right? And so you pick, you just got to, Make it simple and easy and win series. I'm pulling up their. Uh, give me a second here. I'm going to pull up their, their uh, schedule. So, what are your thoughts about what I'm talking about as far as, as far as just winning series and playing small ball? I mean, yeah, they're going to have to do that. Like I said, they need to play well while Judge is out until he gets back. Otherwise, I, it's kind of been the theme of the podcast. You can't dig your hole early in the season and just. Hope to mer you know have a miracle and climb out of it. I know a lot of teams have gone on runs in recent years. You know the the Nationals in 2019 were 19 and 30 something. You know, and they went on a run and then won the World Series. Look, every team, not every single team can do that. Right. So, so as so as, you, as fan as fan bases, I feel like fans need to you know need to realize you know, and the players need to realize you know, you got to pick the games in April and May do matter. They count. Yep, exactly, exactly. So I'm looking at this. So 
two out of three so far that they've taken um, in May. Okay. They've got three in Tampa Bay. So take two out of three. Then here you go. You got three with Oakland. Take two out of three at home or win all three of those. Then you've got four with Tampa Bay next weekend. Okay. Try to take three out of four from that. You got four with Toronto in Toronto. You got three with a struggling Reds team in Cincinnati. You got three with Baltimore, which is that team's scary. Uh, nobody's talking about that team. You got three with the um, with the San Diego Padres in the Bronx. And then you've got three with Seattle in Seattle. Seattle struggling. Cincinnati struggling. Oakland is not struggling. They're just terrible. And I so mean, take those games. You, yeah, they, they are must win games. But, you know, it's like the Reds have a, you know, a sneaky good lineup. You know, it's better than it looks on paper. Mm -hmm. Same with the Mariners. So it's, I think going in with the mentality of just taking series is really helpful because yeah. that way you don't go in overconfident. Because if you're just trying to win two out of three, you know, even with Aaron Judge show up and say, oh, we're the Yankees, we should trounce this team. It's not, you know, the make up the ground they've lost. It's not going to fly because a lot of, these these middle teams on the fringe of the wild card are actually pretty scrappy and they're really annoying. <laughs> yeah, no, they're really annoying. They're scrappy. I get it. But it again, if you've got what is that six, you've got six nine games with teams that are are struggling. One's terrible, right? So go seven and two, go six and three with those teams, right? You've got seven with uh, this month with Tampa Bay. Try to go five and two. Go four and three. It's four fine. and three. Four and three gets you a game. Yeah, four and three picks up a game. And then if you can take Baltimore, if you can win that series, two out of three in that series, okay? And then Toronto, again, take three out of four or even split that series. Like, there's ways to do it. You don't have to sound the alarm bell like all is devastated, right? But, I mean, look at Oakland, for example. Oakland doesn't know where they're going to play next season. Oakland has a bunch of, of guys on their team that are just happy to wear Major League Baseball uniforms but will not finish their careers with the A's. Oakland has no identity. They're not fighting for anything. There's no loyalty there with the teammates. It's not a thing, you know, if you had an Aaron Judge in Oakland when he was fighting for a new contract, he's not going back to Oakland, right? He's going anywhere but Oakland. So take advantage of those things. Take advantage of those small things. But that, I mean, what do I know, right? <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, but I, I'm, i yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with, with the whole, whole scenario. So I think we've got it covered pretty good, right? We got Aaron Judge, Bryce Harper, and the Cardinals. We talked about the Mets, the Phillies, and the Yankees. So we talked about four teams this week. Yeah. Pretty impressive, Jackson. We don't usually do that. No, we don't. We don't usually do that. So awesome. Any um any honorable mentions that you want to make? Uh Jacob deGrom injured again. And other news, water is wet. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I thought you were gonna say somebody just hit their 500 strikeout mark. Ooh. Shohei. Oh, yeah, Shohei. As a pitcher. I mean, come on, you're the stats guy. That's right. That's my bad. Jackson, that's it. You're out of here. No. I've been reading I've been reading stats all day for a, a different podcast, which watch out for that one on Chop House Chatter. Exactly. So that's where I was going to lead to next. <laughs> Jackson, tell me about your other podcast. Tell me about what it does with Top Fan. And then tell me about how we get gear and what, what the gear – cost and what it looks like so uh chop house chatter is an atlanta braves podcast that uh thomas and i do uh we were on an episode on monday uh with here on top fan so we run here once a week uh if you like the braves come check us out if you like baseball come check us out we will have a video dropping in the next week about an all-time major league baseball player draft so we'll be drafting all times greats. We'd love to hear your feedback on whether uh, 
my team would win or Thomas's team would win. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a slight preview. Thomas called his team Team Steroids. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that. So you got to watch, you got to watch, check it out. Uh, if you go into the Top Fan Shop and you see anything you like, use code Chop House. Get 10% off. That's right. Off a hat, off a shirt. Check it out. Yep. Yep. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Jackson, let's just keep doing this. There's a lot of fun um that we have with that we got new logos we still got the what i'm going to call the old school or the cooperstown logo that you can get your hands on so enjoy that enjoy um enjoy where we're going to take this and guys gals i love the fact that you're part of this top fan rivalry community so continue to follow us and continue to make sure that you're following jackson and thomas on their youtube page if you're not subscribing to their to their channel I don't care if you're a Braves fan or not. It is good baseball content. If you're a baseball peers, go after it. So, Jackson, again, thanks for the time. For those of you uh, listening in the locker room, invite a friend. There's more out there, so it's going to be exciting. So, yeah. all right, Jackson, we'll do this again sometime soon, yeah? Yeah. All right, talk to you soon.